Hello, hello, and good morning. How is everyone doing today? Can I close? Okay, I can close that. Perfect. Perfect. I can put this here. Let's announce people that were live. Okay. Hello, hello. There's something, please. Yeah. In a second, just let me set up things. Sorry for the delay. I'm just uh, sharing the stream. All right. Good, 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 good. Oh, this is still going, right? Let me restart it. Also, what are we building today? Hmm, that's a very good question. Uh, let me push this public. And, well, I think it's good to go. Have the thumbnail, we have the game up and running. Okay, good. Should be good. All right. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Okay, let me move this here. It's a it's a bit of a slower uh, Monday morning. Although I went for a run, so that's cool. Let's see. Okay, that works. That works. Good. Everything should be working. Awesome. Let me make this big. The music is working. Thank you for the follow. Oz the Mirk. Light is good. And chill. Alright, so for today, um, as I mentioned last week, every day I'm trying to build one iCodis project and also like try to add something on top of it so we make it a little bit more interesting but uh, than the default and then we're going to be building something else uh, like a bigger project build online drawing app mm, that's actually a good idea uh let's see our suggestion app Thank you for the follow, Alpertunga. Alpertunga. <laughs> yeah, so for those who want to suggest things, you can use this. I'm not sure why I can't paste in OBS. OBS and paste Mac. Let me look it up. Mm 
And then, I don't know. So go to source, dog rightly groups to copy. Yeah. And paste in Mac app. Maybe there's some kind of a restart. I did that. I don't know why I can't paste. So yeah. Twitch chat. It's user suggestions versus the app. This is the app we built last week where you can log in and you can suggest things. So yeah, we'll use this for suggestions. <laughs> Build something live with Ivy. I did that as. Okay, so that's up. That's up. Also, the online map game should be up. Let's see. That's uh, 49. Yeah. Wor it's working. 52. And yeah. yeah. This is also a game we built last week where random equations fall on the screen and we solve them. And it's also an online multiplayer game. At some point, we need a website where we uh, post all of these projects we built. Online map game up railway that app. Okay. Hey, I see that. 121. Yeah, in like 130, 72, 67, 47, 71, oh, 8, 118. I like this game a lot. <laughs> Especially like it. Sort of like math, so probably that's why. Uh, four nine nine four thirty six three seven six zero. Boom! That's a big one. Agent is going down. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Also, for those of you who don't know, I have a new setup, and the mic now is right in front here. So you should be able to hear, well, better, I suppose. Let me know if it's not right for you. All right, good. Goody, 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 goody. Now, um, yeah, I'll keep this as a way to brainstorm ideas. So I, I have uh, two ideas I would like to try. One is to build a snake game with a twist. You have three or something like you have one, two, three lives per day or something like that. And you have to come back in 24 hours to play again or uh, pay for lives so kind of make it a pay to play thingy. I don't know. Just a random idea. And this way we can kind of uh, we can kind of practice building something with payment, right? Build an Instagram clone in React. Yeah, that's easy. So I was thinking today while I was running that I want to start um, building small projects just to like get into the back into the habit of building stuff you know and then uh yeah i want to go into building bigger projects because i see a potential in that in long term i saw people who do big tutorial projects if you go on youtube there's antonio which i really like uh code with antonio yeah i really like like his videos are awesome. I'll start to look at them to learn because I still need to learn how to like patch things up because I'm very good at building uh, small projects from scratch, but like in a real, real life kind of scenario, you use libraries probably and you connect things. So yeah, this is a great resource code with Antonio on YouTube. Also, there's uh, GSM, not that, 
JavaScript Mastery. So another awesome channel for two friends of mine. They're doing amazing content. And uh, if you don't know about them, go follow. And yeah, you can see that they're doing hundreds of thousands of views. So that's just awesome. Which means that people like this stuff, right? So um, I want to get to a point where I'm able to build this in a stream, okay? Or, well, maybe in multiple streams. But until then, I'm happy with building smaller projects to start with. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, we built a mad game. I made a video about that. So what I want to do right now is to, as I said, get into the habit of building projects, especially live, hanging out with the community, learning together, right? So this is the phase where we're learning. Okay. Uh, and then slowly we can go up to building more and more and more complex things. Okay. So that's the goal. Like even this game, oops, I refreshed. Uh, it's not a very complicated one, right? But yeah, with time we can add more things to it. Maybe we can add authentication and stuff like that. But for now, I like the idea of having an, I like the idea of having ideas, <laughs> having small ideas and putting them into practice, building something and moving on. All right, and another idea I have, thank you for the follow, Sandeep. Uh, so there's a snake game with a twist. I think for this, I might need two sessions because first I have to figure out how to build a snake game. Maybe we can watch a tutorial and get, get started from that, right? We don't have to like do it from scratch. Uh, sorry. And there's another idea I saw built like this very fancy card how was it like a credit card animation sort of thing i think i saw on code pen code pen credit card animation let's see can we find it? it? It was like very with Alpine. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so you enter here and it appears there. See, I like that. But w the one I saw was also like rotating and stuff. But this is good. It's kind of a good start. But I saw a more complex one. Very, very beautiful one. Maybe this one. Ooh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> this is, yeah, just, just the like transition thingy on hover. Okay, now. Hmm. Maybe this one? No. Okay. I don't know which one. I submit. Yeah, but I don't know. I had this idea in, in mind. Okay. Good. And as we like look around, we can start to like write more ideas. You saw it on Twitter if I remember correct. Yeah, probably. Thank you, JavaScript. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's kind of the idea to evolve into building more complex things. All right. Uh, David Martin Mraz. David 
Whereas, yeah, he builds a lot of things. Uh, yeah, so he has, but it, it's already like, yeah. So I saw this, but I also saw the the project where you had to enter the details, the card details, you know. And as you entered, so we had an example before, like you entered the card details, and then when you were getting to the CVC or whatever is in the back, uh, it will rotate. Yeah, it was posted by a girl. I think I think that one. By the way, uh, is the audio right? I see it kind of spirals out of control. Yeah. So, um, something like that, probably, yeah. Audio is fine. Okay. Yeah, I just see it go to the red zone, so I don't want it to be too loud. But as long as you can hear me well, all, all good. Oh, let me... Okay, just hang on a second. I want to post the video I posted. Uh, viewer channel, videos. Let me share it. Just so it gets a bit more views. I built an online multiplayer game with Node.js and Socket.io. Go watch. Okay, good. So that's that. Of course, I also have an idea of uh, this. This will be a fun one, and you'd you'd like it. A uh, going from this idea of socket IO, we could build some sort of a uh, online shooting game. Uh, so imagine there are circles on the screen. I, I <laughs> I'm kind of excited of this though. <laughs> uh, we have circles on the screen and you are the circle and you can move around and you can shoot people and then there's a leaderboard. We kind of follow the same kind of idea of the map game, but you just shoot people around and we have uh, a message saying that I don't know, Florine shot Adrian and you know, you get a point and stuff like that. We can keep track of how many, how many times you shot someone, how many times you died and stuff like that online shooting game I'll, I'll say here agario type because just just so i can like remember basically moving circles shooting circles leaderboard with leaderboard and uh history we probably will build this today. I, I really like the idea. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's the uh, flex box at its finest. <laughs> okay. Good. So. So, 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 so. Uh, the one thing I don't know how I'm going to do here, which is. See, this is why I like these live streams because I'm kind of learning as I go as well. So you'll see me build stuff, I learn stuff, and you can help me. So you learn stuff. So everyone learns and builds, and we have fun, hopefully, most of the time. All right, let's see what kind of projects we had in iCode this that we could build with a spin. Let's see if I get inspired by something, something. See, this is like a card thingy. Ooh. Now, I'm kind of inspired to build this card animation on top of this project. Hey, Tony, what's popping? <laughs> We're popping fine. We're trying to um, figure out the project to build an ICO this and then a project. Well, I'll probably work on that Agario shooting kind of thing because that has a lot of moving pieces, which I'm kind of excited to figure out. So 
So yeah. Let me look through this. Ooh. Also, this is fun. Mm, because I could learn how to do this slide thing. Never done it. So we could build this UI. And then have... Ooh, that would be fun. How do you do that in JavaScript? Maybe some kind of drag event. So you drag, and then if you dragged more than, I don't know, 50 pixels, you have the other options. I think that's it, right? Okay, let's do this. I like this. I I'm inspired by this. You found the girl, but it's the wrong girl. <laughs> That's kind of the summary of what you said. Okay, good. Uh, so that's that. That's that. Look at the link I was sending. Uh, where? I I'm not on this cord. I turned it off because it's noisy. <laughs> yeah. By the way, by the way, by the way. Look, I, I kind of dressed up a bit nicer. I want to, to, to look like a professional, you know? And uh, one of these days, because my... Uh, how do you call it? A hairdresser? Hair barber, whatever. Uh, he is not sick anymore, so I'll probably go and have a nice haircut. So I'll be super pretty. Well, I'm always pretty, but I'll be even prettier. I'm kidding. I'm ugly. All right, good. Uh, Adrian, point down this... N note down this point in time, because we're starting to work on this challenge. Hopefully, I can do it in an hour because the Agario type of thingy, we need a name. We need the name of that game. Okay, it'll give me a, a few more minutes to kind of gather my thought there. Yeah, he died. He was so sick though. <laughs> uh... Okay, so for this one, we'll build the layout. That should take us 10 minutes, probably, to build the layout. We'll build it from JavaScript, uh, because it's easy, I guess. Maybe we'll do one in HTML, and then, because, like, the idea of this, let me put it there. So, so what do we have here? We have a, a dev, a wrapper, and then this is a flex, right? This kind of thing here. It's a flex with the image on the left, and we have this section, which is divided in three, and then this section. And then, uh, in order to have these two buttons underneath, we're going to use positioning. So we'll have another wrapper behind this, that will contain these two buttons and then we'll have to figure out like how do i make it so when i click on this and drag it to the left we reveal this button yeah so kind of i think that's that's the gist of it right okay so that could could work and then the agario all right we'll we'll, we'll think about the the game after. Hey, Andras, how are you? Okay, I'll go quickly to the bathroom. I have to blow my nose for some reason. Probably I'm sick. Uh, and then we'll start working on this. I hope to finish it in an hour, although I, uh, that will be tricky part. But yeah, we should do this in an hour and then have uh, I have until 1 p.m. So I have 
2 hours and 45 minutes. We'll get started working on the game. How's that? Everyone's on board? Say, uh, yay. <laughs> Alright, be right back. Give me one minute. All right. Okay, okay. We're back in business. I'm ready, sort of, to br to have a brain freeze at some point. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Nyatsa Merex, Merex, You have a fun name. To the overflow. Hey, good to see you. Mad game is kind of broken. Ooh, someone broke it already. Why did you test? <laughs> Why is broken? You say it's okay. It looks fine. No one uh, hacked it yet, although people will hack it for sure. Because I'm first. <laughs> because no one is playing. Matt repeats itself. Uh, at some point, yeah, I mean, they're bound to because we have 99 numbers, uh, like, randomly picked. Good morning, Infernum. How are you? Too often, I mean, 26 plus 29. I don't know. That That is just, uh, it was, it's random. So y y you got lucky. You know, didn't we give this a fixed height for? S I think we did, right? Uh, thirty-seven. We should have given it. Okay, good. Also, for those of you watching live, uh, I'm also trying to turn these sections of the live stream into videos. So, uh, I'll try to focus and not spend too much time with the chat. So if you have questions, uh, I'll answer at the end. Does it make sense? Raise your left feet if you understand. We had the saying, uh, if you like it, raise your left feet. <laughs> but yeah. Open it with Mozilla. I, I got the same question five, ten times in a row. I mean... Use Google Chrome. <laughs> uh, by the way, the code is on GitHub. GitHub uh, Matt game or something. Let me see. What's the repo? Uh, what 
where do I find? Okay, online map game. So you can like pull request here. If you see it's broken, fix it. Make a pull request. Let me know, and I'll. <laughs> the point is, I cheated. That's how I got first place. He repeats the question over and over. You cheater. <laughs> Why did you cheat? All right, good. So anyone has any questions before we start? Because I'll, I'd like to focus that to, to go into the flow state. You'll kind of see an aura start to build around me. It's bad design. Nyeh, 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 bad design. You're a bad design. <laughs> you go build your game. Sure. Go have fun, bro. Yeah, of course, it, it's not flawed. No, sorry, it's flawed. <laughs> it's not, not flawless. I, I admit we built it during like a few hours, but yeah, it was fun. That's that's important, right? You, ha you have to have fun while coding. Okay, good. No questions, we can get started. Adrian, write down this time. All right, so let's build this layout of a kind of a restaurant app where you have the menu. And basically what I want to focus on mostly after building the layout is this kind of JavaScript slide effect where if you drag the, let's call it item, let's call this an item. If you drag the item in the left, you'll uh, see these two buttons. So how I'm thinking to build this is we're going to have a main wrapper, which will hold the item that has the image and the text, the stars, the tags and distance. And also in that wrapper, we're going to have an absolutely positioned element, which will be the, this container of two buttons, which will stay behind the main item. And then when we drag the main item, it will reveal the buttons underneath. I'm going to be honest, I never built sort of this slide effect. So that's going to be a fun one. But first, let's go focus on building the layout. By the way, this is a challenge on iCode this. So if you want to build it yourself, go on iCodeThis.com and you can go to challenge 443 and build the project. Okay, we're starting from this screen. Let me clean whatever we have inside. I hope to build this in about an hour. So we'll see how much time it takes. But yeah, I'm trying to kind of see, am I good at estimating? Sudo, thank you very much. $10 donation. That's amazing. I highly appreciate it. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Kathleen, hi. How are you? All right. <laughs> Let me go back up building stuff. Thank you. Love you. Okay, so what was I doing? <laughs> All right, yeah, so. Let's start by building this item where we have the image on the left, the text, stars, tags, and then the distance to the right. I'll first build one in HTML and CSS. Well, actually I'll use Tailwind because I got used to it. And then we're going to convert this to in JavaScript to make it dynamic because I don't know, it's easier than we don't have to copy paste things. We can just be smart about it and make everything dynamic. All right. So we have the wrapper already. I guess we can have this orange background color on it. So orange, let's see, 700. Yeah, ah, that seems about right. And we can have a restaurant kind of, or restaurants. Okay, so this is a restaurant app. Let's have 
text uh, to Excel, text white, and text center. So it's in the center, like that. Beautiful. We won't do the search and the menu button here. We'll focus mostly on having the items and then the slide effect. All right, good. So first item, let's put everything inside the UL, keep things semantic and an ally. First thing, we need an image. Let me think. So this will be, this will be an image, then a div with a text stars and tags, which will be spans, and then another div with an icon and the text inside. That feels about the right markup. And of course, everything will be flex, so we can move it around. And it should look good on mobile because this is a mobile layout. Good, so image, we'll find an image soon. And then in div, we want a paragraph that will say the name. I don't know, uh, pizza place, easier for me to type. And then here we'll have the stars in another div. We'll put the stars icon in a second. And underneath we'll have, in another div we'll have spans. That will be the tags, like I don't know, vegetarian and then span, uh, I don't know, fish and then span uh, tofu. As you can see, I'm very good with names. And we could also make the text be white and the background color to be something like slate 300. Hmm. I'm not sure I like it. Maybe this brown, uh, brownish, orangish color is too much. Okay, I like it now better. Good. And let's do the last part. So div, and another div, which will be an icon. And let's have a small, although it kind of feels a big text. So paragraph 1.8 kilometers and an icon there. All right, good. So we go to Unsplash and we find like food, something, something. Wow, these looks amazing, but it's from Unsplash, so can, uh, it's from Plus, all right, good. So I guess we can use this. Thank you, Chad Montano for the image. So we'll place this as a source. Copy image address like that, and we can say Chad Montano, just so we know who gave us the image. All right, good. Now, we have the image. Oh, let's add the icons as well, and then we can style everything nicely, nicely. So we go to Tabler icons, and here we find the star, our field, of course, we want the field star. And here we can paste in one, two, three, four, five stars. And boom, we have the stars as well. And the last thing is kind of like an arrow, arrow right. Oh, can I find the same thing? Like a boomsy boomsy thingy thingy? Oh, uh, this could work as well. Maybe this one. They should have it. Look, it has that. that uh, I'll find it. Okay, don't worry. I'm here. I'll save it. Where is it though? <laughs> so corner right. Okay. Uh, corner right. Oh, you know what? I guess. Oh, look at that. Aha, found it. I'm so smart. I'm not, but well. All right, good. So we have the entire structure, right? We have everything we need. Now, let's uh, style it to match this kind of layout. All right, good. So we start with the image. 
on the image we want to have it very small so maybe width 20 height 20 let's see how that looks okay that feels about right we want to be grounded so excel okay and shadow excel I love you too, winds out how? Okay, good. Now, in order to have everything, as I said, in this direction, we will use Flexbox. So we'll just type Flex, and let's give it a gap of six, like that. Uh, and we can say space between. I think we need weight fall as well. Oh, hmm. Let me see. Is the UL taking up the full space? EG purple 500. Yes. Now, is the UL, the LI taking up the full space? EG purple 500. Yes. All right. So I think the class is wrong. This is justify between. There you go. I'm so smart. All right, good. Uh, we want this to be text Excel and font medium, I guess. That seems about right. We want the stars also to be in a flex container. Gap one. Okay. And let's have it hmm, text yellow 400. Okay. And maybe a bit of spacing between these. So like here, we could say on the parent um, space Y2. Okay. I like that. I kind of like that. Goody, goody. Awesome. And... Of course, we have like now the stars are all uh, yellow. So we could go to the last one and give it a class of text uh, gray 700. No, it's too much. So something. Oh, we can do 20% opacity or so something like that. Maybe 30%. All right, good. And the last thing, the spans here. What do we need? We need to have a border to have some spacing. And that's kind of it. So border and space. Uh, no, sorry. Padding X2 and rounded. Rounded full. Okay, and maybe... We could do P, Y, 1. A bit of a spacing on vertical. Good. I, I think that looks good. And we can copy this class to this one and to this one. And there you go. Where did we, hmm, we have a spacing. Something happened there. What happened there? We didn't change anything. Am I missing something? Because of the spans? But they're in, in a div. Hmm. Let's debug to see what happens. I guess we could also say flex, flex column and gap two. This way kind of feels the same. Oh, I think this, this yeah, the spacing here is the same as here, but the border goes up, so... Mm. I'm thinking, I like them as pens, but if we'll have block, well, inline block, then they'll pick up the border there, the margin there. MX, MY. Let's see. Margin bottom two here. I 
kind of feels like the hack. But, alright, I'll take it. That spacing takes up also from the margin, because it's a inland element. I suppose. There's some kind of hacks sometimes you have to figure out. Alright, good. And maybe make the stars smaller and this icon bigger. So let's do that. The icon bigger, this one, will make it 48, double. Ooh, look at that. It looks kind of fancy. And we can cover this to be a strong tag, which will have uh, font bold included. Okay, let's make the stars a bit smaller. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to not break everything. So 18 and height 18 as well. All right. Also for the image, uh, I want to add object cover. Just in case we have an image and it's not square material, we want it to not be squished at some point. Good. Still, it feels like we have a lot of space there. So probably make it a bit smaller. So we have max with Excel, we could say LG. All right, not too bad. Not too bad. And of course, we need the background color here to be something like BG Orange 500. Come on. All right, look at that. That's like super pretty. <laughs> okay, fun stuff. Now, uh, this is flex justify between. Let's also add items center so then the image goes to the center this goes to the center perfect and it appears that we have padding on the parent so let's remove that from there now that's better and we would like to add padding here so p6 all right good it still feels it's a bit too big maybe max with MD all right I kind of like this of course we can have uh, let's see we have spacing four here we can remove it and then have a bit of a padding on the title okay and there's one thing we could do to have rounded corners here as well. We could either figure out which is the last ally and make it have rounded corners on the bottom. Or we could have overflow hidden on the parent. So then that's kind of cropping out element and look at that we're in a good shape <laughs> thank you very much for this subscription i appreciate it you like bob a fun one thank you very much for the subscription Yeah, yeah, I think also is a troll. <laughs> but hey. All right. So we have this and it looks pretty decent, I would say. Right? I mean, the color is a bit off. Maybe there's an, another like pinky, orangey color. It's not like it's so orangey. Let's... Can, can we change it to pink? Will it look better? Ooh, I kind of like this. And 
What goes well with pink? Let's see. Pink team color or team color palette. Maybe that kind of color. What's that? White? Hmm. Okay, let's try this. Okay, I like this. I really do. Good. So we have one item. Now we could just like copy paste this and we can see what happens. We have another item. Uh, and I think there was, let me check Tailwind CSS. There was a border between sort of divide X. Yeah, we had a class divide X. So if I add class divide X, we'll have border between, uh, sorry, Y. All right, look at that. We have borders by default. This is, this is super cool. So it, it adds border top and bottom between the elements. How cool is that? Tailwind is cool. I like Tailwind. All right, good. So let's move this to JavaScript. Like all of this will be done dynamically in JavaScript. That's for part two. Let's see what the chat says. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll take a, a short break to hydrate. Okay, so no questions. People in the chat are super, super smart. Maybe I'm the dumbest here. <laughs> because I, ha I have some questions sometimes. All right, let's go back. So in the JavaScript, we're going to convert this layout that we created in HTML and fill it up with dynamic content. So how is that going to work? First, we need an ID for this UL wrapper. Let's say something like uh, restaurants, rest wrapper. Let's not be lazy, restaurants wrapper, like that. Then we can tar target it, restaurants wrapper. And we get it document dot get element by ID. Rest, uh, that's such a big word to write. Rest, uh, runs wrap per like that. And we're going to keep our restaurants in an array with objects. And what do we need? Let's see. So we have the image. This is all the dynamic, um, dynamic content that we have. So we have the image, which will be a string. We're going to have the name of the restaurant. We're going to have tags, which is an array of, let's see, vegetarian and fish and tofu and whatever you want, you know. All right, and we have stars. This will be a whole number. So let's say four stars. That's going to be a fun one to dynamically um, figure out how to build. And then we're going to have the distance. Distance. Let's say 1.8 in this case. We'll keep this a number as well. Good. Now we're going to loop. Right now we only have one. By the way, let me add actually the date details here. So the image will be this. 
And then the name will be Pizza <laughs> Pizza Place. It's funny that we have Yeah, you can have a vegetarian pizza, fish pizza, tofu pizza. Never had the tof tofu pizza, but I guess that's that's something you could have, right? Okay, good. And now we're going to loop over this. So restaurants. And for each restaurant, just give me this one, okay? We'll use rest. It's 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 shorter. We're going to create a restaurant element, which will be that wrapper that we have, which we know is an ally, right? We can look at the wrapper. Let's paste it in. Oops, I lost it. Let me copy it again. So this whole thing, we, we need to recreate this whole thing in JavaScript and make it dynamic. So let's do that. So basically right now we create an element, which is an ally, which is this one. Then restaurant element, we're going to give it a class name of all the classes that we have here, right? This is the beauty of starting with the HTML markup first, because afterwards you can just fill in the dynamic part in JavaScript and be done with it. So Coolio Coolio. Next, let's see what we have inside it. So inside the restaurant element, which is the UL, sorry, the LI, we're going to have the inner HTML. And here we'll use template literal and we can copy everything inside. Oh boy, this is a big, big, big thing we have here. So we'll copy everything inside and we'll paste it here like that. We can get rid of this. We don't need it anymore. And then we'll just change the markup inside this. So let's see. Okay. So we have the image and we have the source of the image, which is the image URL. And remember, we have this rest variable, so we can use it rest dot image and boom, that should work. Next, uh, by the way, before finishing up, let's just add it to the DOM so we can see it. Uh, after we finish the DOM here for the element, we want to add the restaurant element to the restaurant wrapper. So restaurant wrapper append child and we'll add the restaurant element. Look at that. See, this is, this is our, initial uh, our initial one and this is the copy. So just so we know it's a copy, let's find another image on Unsplash. From Pizza. Let's take this from Ivan Torres. Thank you, Ivan, for the image. Be blessed. So we can do that. And this will... Uh, Ivan's Pizza Place. I can use double quotes there. All right, so now we know that this is Ivan's. And also the distance, let's make it two and stars. Let's give it five stars because Ivan is the cool, the coolest pizza place in the place of pizza. All right. So see, now we have that. We only changed the image and you can see the new image. Now for the alt here, I usually like to use the title. So rest that name in this case. Then here is the name actually in the paragraph. So rest that name and then boom, look at that. Ivan's pizza place is there. Uh, I'm not going to do the images, uh, the icons for now, because that's going to be an interesting one to do. We'll do it in a second. And also this is going to be because we're, ha we're going to have to create a loop. But what I'm going to do is change this because this is easier. And you know what? Just start with the easy things first. So here we have, what was it? Distance. All right, now look at that. We have the distance in place as well. Now, for the tags, we're going to copy this. And here, 
we're going over rest at tags and let's see we want to map it each tag into its own span so something like that and here instead of vegetarian we can say give me the tag please we can remove these and look at that we have three tags which are coming from this place so if i say i don't know what kind of pizza uh pineapple because people apparently like that pineapple and remove tofu because i don't know if that's the thing we have the tags now the only trick here is that if you use the map inside of a template literal you'll you'll have those commas and what you have to do is to join it back uh, with an empty string, maybe a space. And look at that. It works like a charm. And the cool part of doing everything dynamically is that, well, if you want to change the style, as you can see there, they're kind of over overlapping there. So I could say, you know what? I want all of you to be inline block now. And bow. You know what? I want all of you to have a margin of one. And boom. You know? It's that easy. Okay. I'm still... I have that space there. Margin one. <laughs> I have kept there. So why do we have more margin there? I'm missing something for sure. But, okay, we'll figure it out at some point. Let's make this apple. Just, it's smaller. Still doesn't work. Hmm. What's you wrong with you? Oh, because of the space? Because of the space, of course, because of the space. The join. Yes. Thank you, chat. You're very good today. Uh, and now we don't need that margin bottom anymore because we converted them to inline block. So now... Everything is super cool. And I guess even Margie 0 0.5 will be good. And let's see if we have pineapple back here. Yeah, it kind of looks good. Maybe we can say something like text small. Uh, Adrian, instead of deleting, just ban it. You know, you can hide user from channel and then, yeah. Uh, I think you can, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So if I took a break, let's see the chat. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the follow, Range Bomber and Kushal and Airright. Airright. Thank you very much. And me, hi. Hey, how are you? Okay, good. Let's go back to. Oh, <laughs> and Saran, Heroic. Thank you very much. I appreciate the follow. Good. So let's hydrate if we have a break. Cheers. Heron, hi. <laughs> Good. I have an awesome community. Found you on my feed. Oh, nice. I like that. Thank you for joining. I hope you'll enjoy the content. We are building uh, stuff. <laughs> We're trying to learn new stuff. Right. Uh, by the way, you'll see that I'm focused on building the code because I'm trying to kind of convert this to uh, to a video after. So if I took take too many breaks during the, the coding phase to interact with the chat, then it's a bit harder to cut it off after. But if you have questions, I'll happily answer after I finish uh, the project, you know? So yeah, sorry about that. It's just, I'm trying to kind of piece things together to make it a 
nice experience for everyone. Uh, what do you do? I mean, what tech stack? Right now, it's just simple HTML and Tailwind CSS to build this restaurant uh, UI. And we're going to focus on building... I never did this, so that's going to be fun. To build this slide thingy. <laughs> so yeah, that's going to be fun. But first, I want to make the UI. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So this is the first project we're going to build today. Uh, uh, this is on iCodes, so one of the daily projects. And then I'm going to attempt to build an online multiplayer game where people can shoot each other. Like you're a small circle moving around in a space and then you can point at things. And yeah, it's probably going to be fun. I don't know. <laughs> That's going to be a challenge as well because I never built it. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, are you familiar with mobile dev? Uh, no, I'm a web developer. I mean, I did some mobile apps five, six years ago, but yeah, not much. All right, so let me pick up my uh, how was it? Like, train of thought, something like that. My brain, whatever. You, you'll know. You're smart people. Okay. Uh, Adrian, if you are kind, write down the times I'm taking some breaks. Although it's going to be pretty easy to edit because, um, I, I didn't took many breaks. So, yeah. Sly, thank you very much for the subscription. I really, 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 really appreciate it. We have, I think, three subscriptions in this stream. That's like a new record. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Alboy, thank you for following. You're so amazing. Quick questions to chat. Unrelated web development. Do you guys know an active guy teaching Java FX? Ooh. What's that? Thank you very much, Sly, again, for, for subscribing. I really appreciate it. We had a donation, and I even, uh, I mean, I don't know where the donations go. <laughs> I need to check that because that's something I set up like three years ago. Okay, good. Let's go back because we have a little bit left to finish this part. And then we'll uh, complete the sliding animation, hopefully. So yeah. Okay, good. So next up, let's see how we're going to figure out how to style the stars here, because we are given the stars in an array. No, we're given the stars as a number not an array, and we want to figure out, all right, so if we have five stars here, we want all the, all the five stars to be yellow. Now, I have, I mean, I think there's just two ways at least to do this. One, we could create an array of X elements, which is the stars given. So if we have fives, we have, create five stars and we'll make them yellow or we could because we already have the five stars in the dom we could say something like let me remove the classes here we can move the text color into the stars and we could say something like class and we'll make it dynamic is stars so it's let's see rest that stars greater than one greater than equal that one if it is then it's text uh yellow 400 otherwise it's text gray whatever it was 300 no it was 700 with 20 opacity 
like that. And we can copy this to all of the rest of it. Okay, this is not the most dynamic, but it is it is something. We'll convert it to dynamic thing in a second. So we want to see if we have two stars, three stars, four stars, and five stars. And look at that, it works. Let's see, if we change this to three stars, the last two should be gray. See, so that's, that's cool. Now, I don't like the fact that I'm kind of copy pasting the same thing. So let's see if we can make it more dynamic. As I mentioned in the, in the first example, can we have, let's see, rest.stars. Uh, how do you convert, I think, array from or array of all right, I need to check this in the console to make sure that it works. So let's see. If you want array of four, it will create four empty slots. So an array with four empty slots. And if we say array four dot fill with zero, then it will create an array with four zeros in it. Now let's see. Can we do array four? dot fill and paste in the SVG. Rest is not defined. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, just remove this part. All right, that's cool. So we can do that. Or we could like create an array with zeros and then map it. Okay, so let's do that array of stars although that's not the no no I'm, I'm wrong we need an array of five five stars right because we're always going to have five stars so here we're going to fill it with zero and then let's map it and we're going to use a trick here we don't need the first uh, parameter so we'll just use the index. Okay. And here we're going to return. I'm thinking out loud now. So we want to return a string. Can do directly this. Okay. So I return a string. Good. And we have the rest. Okay. And instead of one here, we can use the index. Right? So because like the first item is going to be index zero. So do we check? Do we have the stars property bigger than index plus one, bigger than equal? If we do, then we want the text to be yellow. Otherwise, we want the text to be that great. And at the end here, as we did previously, because we have a map, we need to join it back like that. And we have uh, six stars because we still have this one. All right. So I think that worked. Let's see. With three stars. There we go. That's awesome. Now, because of the stars and the way we built it, it can even work with uh, floating numbers. So if you have like a uh, 4.7 rating, you'll get four stars. Of course, you can kind of figure out how to make it a four point and five and then have half a star, but oh well, <laughs> it's good for now. <laughs> Rosvita, thank you very much for becoming a popper. I appreciate it. Go for code. I like, I love your stream. I am just a graduate software developer. Mostly did backend. Now I learn frontend. Awesome. Very glad you like it. 
yeah, this is front end peak. <laughs> All right, that was a, a little break, a little break. Little journey. Hi, welcome to the screen. Not screen. Well, there's a screen, of course, in front of you. <laughs> welcome to the stream. And everyone who joined in the meantime, welcome. I'll, I'll get back to coding because we have a tiny bit more and we finish it. So yeah. All right. So now that we have dynamic stars, dynamic tags, dynamic distance, dynamic images, dynamic title, everything, we can come here and remove this dummy data, right? And we can go into the restaurants and start adding different restaurants. Let's see. This will be, I don't know, a fish place, which serves a fish and more fish. I'm very creative when it comes to these things. And it has 3.2 because people don't like the fish at the fish place. And the distance is 200. See how it kind of works well? I see uh, an error there. We're going to fix it. And let's, let's find the fish. Uh... Okay, I'll use that, not that. Like uh, cook salmon. I don't want to put a live fish there. <laughs> it feels a bit wrong. All right, this image looks about right. Thank you, Luis Hansel, for the image. So I will copy image address and then we paste it here and boom. Now, you see what's wrong here? Uh, this is centered always. And that's good when you have the full weight here, but when you don't, well, it's not the best. So what we can do is go in our template and instead of having uh, justify between, so have sp a, uh, equal amount of space between the elements, we can remove that and we're going to go to the last item, which is going to be that div, this div, all right? And here we're going to give it a class of margin left auto. And that way that will always go to the right, see? And this will stay nicely here. We have the gap and everything looks just perfect. Like the fish place. Okay, and let's do one more. But already you can see that our dynamic content works. And that's what I really like about doing stuff like this, because it just works. You build the template and then you make it dynamic in JavaScript. And in order to add more data, you just add another object, you know, and this can come from the backend, right? You store this data in a backend and then you make a call and you get all the data and then you just have the template ready to go. Of course, this is a JavaScript. Usually you do stuff like this in something like React or Vue or whatever framework you want. But yeah, you can still do it in JavaScript and it's it's good. All right, let's do one more. Chat, what kind of restaurant do you want to see? So we have sushi Mexican burger place. All right, <laughs> let's do a Mexican sushi burger. <laughs> and then we have sushi burger and Mexican as tags. And this has a hundred stars. See, even if we have a hundred here, it doesn't matter will still have five stars, you know? So it, this number works with everything. Or we, if we have minus 100, it's empty, you know? So it's just perfect. All right, five stars for this one as well. And yeah, let's change the image. Do we, can we find like a, a sushi burger? <laughs> Is that even a thing? Uh, Probably not. Hey, that looks like a kind of a burger. 
Oh, that's an unsplash plus. Okay, I know. I can't use that. So maybe this from Marina Grinica. Thank you for the image. All right. And boom, we have it. And this is very close. This is like one kilometer away. All right. See, everything works. Everything is dynamic and it's just boom. Alessandro, thank you. Have a good day as well. Uh, Gopher, if you put 100 stars, will the back and not think it's 100 stars? Not sure what you mean by that. Avocado pizza, please. <laughs> yeah, that could work as well. Uh, yeah, we see five stars because that's how we implemented the code here. So we only work with, where is it? Here. We create an array of five elements and we fill it. And then we create the SVG based on that array. And yeah, it only works with five. We could like have 10 here. See another benefit of having uh, dynamic things. See how easy it is to create 10 stars now? You just change the number here, you know? And... Yeah, like in a normal circumstance, you also do something like a uh, number of stars, maybe. And you, you save it in a constant. And then you put it here, you know. And again, this is like just like super easy. 10 stars. You want 100 stars. Sure, look at that, 100 stars. Of course, it doesn't work in our layout because we have to, to switch things around, but you, you get the gist of it. Any question before we move on to the last part? Which is going to be tricky, so I'll need a second to think. By the way, this, yeah, not aligned properly, but oh well. Just uh, try to imagine it's aligned. <laughs> Maybe you can sort the list so the closest and highest stars number is first. Yeah, I mean, you can do that very, very, very easily because you have the data here and then you just loop over it. So do you want to, to like sort it? Of course, you can do it right here. You can sort the restaurants. You can do something like sort and you have A, B and here you can have uh, something like B that distance minus A that distance and boom. Well, obviously you want it the other way. You want the, the closest to be first. And boom, see, this is just easy because this renders the la the layout, right? The UI part, and you have it the data here dynamic, and then you just sort it. All right, do you want to sort it by stars? Sure. Instead of distance, just do stars, and boom, the lowest star comes first. You want it the other way around? All right, you can say B dot stars minus A dot stars, and boom. Do you want to sort it by boat? You can, of course. <laughs> uh, let me figure out how. So let's say first you store you sort it by distance, or how do you, would you sort it first? The stars or distance? Maybe stars. Okay, let's leave the stars, and then you can sort. Although I'm, I'm sure you could do it in the same sort, but you could do then you can do this the next sort, and you want to sort it a that distance and minus b that distance uh yeah the fish up fish place and is the yeah they kind of <laughs> right now let's um change it around let's put this to be uh let's the first one to be four star three stars whatever didn't work stars sort and then sort of distance. I think, yeah, you'll have to do it in one sort. Find the formula to do it in one sort because we're resorting it. So it will, it will, this one will override this sort. So you'll have to figure out, all right, how do you rate it based on the sort or the distance and stuff? But yeah, 
that's how would you do it. It's just figuring out like what's the the sort proposition you want to use, you know. Uh, go for yes. Yes, so definitely practice. I highly suggest you practice building stuff. And step by step, you can join Icodes. This is why we built it. So you can join Icodes and build stuff, right? Simple projects and you advance. As you can see, like this is a simple project as well. I mean, well, not like simplest, but it's you can build only the UI or you can make it as, a, as you saw me do here you make it dynamic and then you add the javascript sliding thing you know and you can make it more and more complex uh, no more no more hand handling angling mic yeah i change it now we have now we're very professional i also dressed up for the occasion for the new mic and the cool part with this is that you can hear me well even if i look at the chat or I look to the camera, or I look to the code, because it's close to my mic, to my my alt. Okay, good. I guess we can continue now. Let, let me drink a bit more water, and we can continue. And some. <laughs> yeah, thank you. My wife says that too. I don't believe her, but sure, if she says so, I'm happy. <laughs> okay, before I start, uh, let me see. So we need the drag event. Okay, some somehow somehow. Alright. And I need to recreate so create the element inside here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's kind of the way to go, I believe. It should work, right? Please work. <laughs> okay. So now that we have the layout and it's also dynamic, let's see how we can make this slide JavaScript functionality. I'll be honest, I never built it. So you're going to watch me build this and learn from my mistakes, hopefully. I also hope I'm going to be able to make it. But first, as you can see, we have these two buttons that are hidden behind the element that we created. So let's do that first. Let's make it so that every element has those two buttons behind them. And I'm going to do that here. So we have the element, which is an ally. And inside of it, we have the image and the div and the other div. Right, so the image, this div, and the other div. Now, let's put everything in the side of another div. I'm using a lots of divs. You'll get used to it. And now we need to move the flex thing to be this one, right? Because we changed the parent. So we want to make sure we well respect the order and the reason why i did that also let's move the padding here and with full we don't need it i forgot about that and also the so it's, yeah basically we move everything because now we're also going to have a dev inside of this which will hold the buttons so let's have two buttons Oh, I'm forgot. To, I'm in JavaScript now. I have to type every character. So button, and this will be call, and then we'll have another button, 
And this will be bookmark like that. See, call and bookmark. Uh, let's go get the icons. So we want the phone. Copy SVG, put it here. Let me clean it up. Call like this SVG, like this. Whoops. And then the bookmark is what? Kind of a yeah ribbon. A ribbon. Not that ribbon. Yeah, okay, that, that that's kind of, no, I don't want that. Home ribbon, bookmark, let's see, bookmark. All right, perfect. Uh, does it have it filled? Filled. Or let's use the unfilled one because we use that for the phone as well. So keep the same style. All right, good. So now we have those. Let's style the button. We want it to be flexed. Flex column. Um, that should be good. Items center justify center. And yeah, that should be okay. Let's copy this class, move it to this button as well. Perfect. And the div will also have flex. So they're next to each other and maybe a gap of two. All right, good. So we have sort of this layout. Of course, we need to style it a bit more, but we'll do that in a second. Now, how do we want to position everything? I can remove that class there. We want this to be, actually, I need that because I need relative on the parent and this, so the wrapper on the button will become absolute. That way they go out of the flow and they stay whatever we want. And where do we want them? We want it to be on the right side. And we want to, it to be centered, so top half. And as you can see, it's not exactly in the half. Uh, how do I make it so you can see better? <laughs> Let me position this absolute as well. Ooh, okay, that that that's no bueno because then the the ally doesn't have spacing. Mm. Let's make it relative, and we can have a right twenty something like that. All right, good. See now you can see that. Maybe even more, 40. Okay, see? That's how we're going to kind of build it. We, we pushed this to the right side. All right, and now, as you can see the buttons, maybe we can have some kind of a hover effect on them. Hover, uh, I don't know, opacity, 90. I can't see that much. 70. Okay, good. Let's move that to the other button as well. So we can see if, when we hover it. See, like that. Good. Now, the reason they're not perfectly centered vertically is because top half is going to push it 50% down, but it will account for the top of the element. So in order to center it perfectly, we need to translate it back half of its size like this. So now they're perfectly in the center. And to the right, let's maybe make it four from the right and maybe gap four. So we have the buttons right there. And the cool part about this is that if we put the right back, they're covered. So muy bueno, like that. Now. There's an easy way we could do this. We could have something like hover. Whenever we hover, we want to translate X 40, minus 40, like this. 
So on these elements, when we hover, see, the kind of translating, and we can have transition on it. Look, boop, see? Of course, it's the hover is in the parent, so if you're hovering on it, it goes out, the hover kind of... <laughs> it's not hovering anymore. <laughs> so then, yeah, that's why it does that. Boop, 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 boop. See? Uh, we could also add the hover on this. So we could say group. And then we do group hover. So then when the ally is hovered, it will move to the side. And I don't dislike this. I actually kind of like this. <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. Kind of looks good. Right? Uh, but I said I'm going to do the sliding thing, which will take another hour, probably. Uh, but yeah, already looks pretty good. I guess let's have an other background color there. So that means this will be BG white probably. Let's see, yeah. And then text, uh, text black. And then on the parent here, we'll have text white. So actually, no, no, sorry. This is the button. So this one will be text white. So then it looks like this. Ooh. It's not as good as this one, right? We have the colored icon, so let's color them. Uh, this one, let's make it text blue. It was a sample, so text green 500. And this one, let's make it text blue 500. Yeah. And I guess I'll like them more if it's filled going back to things. So we can say fill current color. Let's see that works. Yeah. Although it kind of looks like a fat phone. <laughs> Let's make it bigger. Both icons, 40 and 40. Yeah, that looks like a fat phone. Maybe we need to do there's another fill here. Let's see what that does. All right, it's perfect. It's a very perfect font. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'll go here and get this filled bookmark. And do this text blue 400 and have a height weight 40. 40 is too much, maybe 32. Ah, good. And then the phone, phone filled. And it looks a fat, like a fat phone as well. So green, text green, 500 and 32. All right, good. Sort of, I, yeah. I don't dislike it. Can say like it a lot, but all right, good. Now, uh, we have it on a hover, which works. I should have thought about this and make it easier for myself to not do the slide, but we're here to learn something new, including myself. So I'm going to learn how to do that. which means that we're going to remove the hover from here. Uh, we'll keep the transition and remove the group from the ally. And, uh, okay, let me think. So we need the drag event. Let's look it up. JavaScript drag event stuff. Hey Bob, hello. Thank you for the follow, Kimbo. I appreciate it.
uh, spiritual journey. Yes, I'm going to work on another project as well. Uh, if I have time, I have to leave in one hour and 30 minutes. But maybe I'll do another stream. Uh, probably tomorrow. <laughs> I was thinking I'll do today, but I have to edit some videos. And yeah, so I'll, I'll need to brace myself. Although the, the project I want to build, it's going to be a cool one. Okay, back to the tutorial. So the drag event, let's see, the drag event is fired every few hundred milliseconds as an element or text selection is being dragged by the user. This event is cancelled and may bubble up. Bubble, 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 bubble. So example, drag and drop examples. Draggable through. Let's see, we have a drag, console log dragging, drag start, drag end, drag target. Oh boy, there's so many events with drag and drop. I guess, yeah, this is, you can drag it like that and drop it somewhere. I think what I need is the drag event. Do I need it? It's not just... Drag start and then drag end and figure out how much we dragged it. <laughs> okay, let's see. So we want to drag the li, right? So this one, and we want to see, okay, if I drag it, how much I drag it. Let's look it up. The JavaScript drag distance. Limit distance object can be dragged to minimum distance, drag and drop. Let's look it up. Probably learn something from these. Uh, jQuery UI. Come on, no, thank you. Draggable mouse down. Mouse down. Okay. Using the offset. All right. But I don't want jQuery. Let's see this one. So drag and drop with mouse events. Or mouse down, prepared element for moving. Let me zoom in. Uh, if needed, maybe create a clone of it and add a class to it. Then on mouse move, move it by changing. Oh, we could do that. Mouse down, mouse move, mouse up. That's uh, interesting. We could use mouse. So let's see, mouse down. We get the position. No, it set the position to absolute Z index. And move at. Center is a ball. Move at event. No. I just have to figure out how much we moved. Let's try. Can I add, let's see, restaurant element at add event listener, mouse down. Let's see what we have here. Uh, console.log e. Uh, no, with mouse event, it won't work on mobile. But we'll do the desktop first and we'll see what we have. So, client x. Because we're only interested in the X side, right? So let's see what we have here. We're going to do a lot of debugging until we f we figure out. But this is this is the beauty of uh, building stuff and learning as you go. Let me do console uh, clear here just to clear out the errors first. Okay, so move down. All right. So see, we have the. Pixel values of what? I think. All right. So it's the screen width. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want that. I want to see like how far are we inside this element. So client X is. 
that's JavaScript client X. I think that's where in the window we are. Right, read only mouse event interface provides the horizontal coordinate within the application viewport. Okay, so I don't want that. I want offset X. Offset X. Let's see. This is the one. 400. Okay, yeah, see? Here we have zero. Here we have 400. Now, uh, Okay, let's also add the mouse up. Mouse up. Oops, like that. And check that. So, because what I want to do, so I click here, I move, and I leave it here. I click here, I move, I leave it here. See? The mouse up didn't fire. So HTML has a native draggable function, says Kazumi. Uh, add draggable to dev, it be becomes draggable. Yeah, we might go with that. Mezola, drag and drop is notoriously difficult to do well without using a library. Yeah, I know. Also, my uh, battery is dying. Just let me plug it in. Okay. Yeah, so it works if it we slide it inside because we can figure out if this number is greater than that number, see? If it we drag it inside it. So we click, drag, up. But yeah, I kind of still want to do the drag part because you want to see that it's moving. Right. So let's add the draggable. Uh, like oh, okay, let's let's start from what we have. We have this. It's not perfect, but we could do it. So we could store. <laughs> now it's tricky because we have it on multiple elements. Let's see. We could store a variable let uh, drag distance and it's zero or no, uh, click, initial click, initial click, it's zero. And then here, when we click on it, we'll store initial click will be E that offset X, right? So that's the distance where we click initially. And then here we compare if initial click, let's see, we want to drag it like how much? 50 pixels, 100 pixels. So let's store that in a variable as well. Drag amount, let's say 50. So and we want to see if the number is smaller. So if initial click minus drag amount, because we want to go to the left, is less than e dot offset here, then we want it to slide up. So we want to do a restaurant element dot add a class list dot add uh, that class that we have minus translate x 40. So let's see. We click here, we move, we leave it. No bueno. So if initial click, let's console log all those. Console.log initial click. We put it here as an object because that way we see the values and all. Drag amount and e dot well uh drop will be e dot offset x. Okay, let's see. So I drag it, I leave it. Initial click 350. 
350 minus 50 should be drop. Uh, bigger than okay wait so i click here i drag it oh okay my my math is wrong so if initial click is less than e that offset plus drag amount drag it e that offset is there Yeah, I'm not doing the math right. It works if I do it like a small amount. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to add a class list to the restaurant element, by the way. I want to go in and find... Ooh, that's gonna be toughy. Uh, the dev. Second dev. Inside it. So let's move everything from here. Let's move it here. And then do query selector. And let's give it a class of, I don't know, draggable. So we want to find a draggable class list and move that. So do that. Yeah, see? Okay, that's good. But the, the mat is wrong, so uh, drag it, that, I subtract it to, okay, maybe that's, that's what I want. So if initial click minus e that offset is greater than drag amount, okay, so if this, yeah, perfect. Good, yeah, so that works. Or we can do else. Uh, we can do the same thing, but remove the class. So I drag it, I drag it back, kind of works. Yeah, so if I drag more than 50 pixels, it will do that. Okay, kind of work. I don't like the fact that it's selecting this. So I could have... Uh, what's in like Tailwind? User select. I'm not sure you want that though. Select none because you kind of see it selects the text. So, user none. Uh, select none, sorry. Uh, but then you can't copy the... Yeah, and that kind of works. And I think it might work on mobile as well. Me, I'm not sure if the mobile triggers the like event or touch event. But probably we could add a, a touchdown, touch up, something like that. But it's definitely, yeah, not a perfect. So we're not, we're far from perfect. But it's a start. And also, I would kind of like to see it being dragged. You can also try changing the pointer to a grabbing icon when mouse down. Oh, uh, yeah, I can do that. Let's see what kind of mouse we have here. Uh, cursor. Grab, cursor grab. So we can have, yeah. Whenever we press this, we... Or actually, do we want it to mouse down only or always? Because if we want it always, we can just type it here. Cursor grab so it's like this see boop boop you kind of see that it's 
and I guess you can have it grabbing when it's mouse down. So mouse down, uh, restaurant element that class list, add cursor grabbing, and then here we can remove that. Like that, so let's see. Boop, see? Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you, chat. Okay. So, remove the consoles. Now, how do I make it? I think I need the drag in order to... I want to see it move when I drag it. So, as much as I drag it... Or is it mouse move? Hmm. That's going to be interesting. Let's try it. Restaurant. Add event listener. Uh, mouse move. Or... We also need to reset this initial click. Uh... At the end of this function, let's do initial click. Let's make it undefined. Also set it here as undefined because we don't have initial click. And then here, mouse move, we want to see the offset. Let's see, console. Uh, well, actually, we can do the math and set it as a left, but only if it's mouse down. <laughs> because I think mouse move will fire. Let's see, console.log e that offset. This will fire when we, yeah, when we move over it. So we only want to make sure that we do that if we have initial click. We want to do what we will do. <laughs> so if we have initial click, we're going to set the restaurant element that style the left to be initial click minus e dot offset x plus pixels. Uh, left. Mm -hmm. So the left side, it will, no, it will increase. So we need to decrease it. All of this with minus in front. Let's see. Are we into something? Click, drag, leave it. All right. Good. <laughs> it kind of into something. Kind of looks very wrong. <laughs> And of course, like, now we can't use translate anymore. Oh boy. It's a fun one. Eh? <laughs> because we're translating, we're moving, we're clicking, we're... Arr! No, it's not the right way to do it. Just call it Disco UI, yeah. <laughs> Add an epilepsy warning. Yeah, it's uh, weird. It's not the way to do it. Because also this kind of like moves the entire thing. We need to do the same query selector. So at least this will fix one part. But yeah, uh, we don't want to use the translate now. Instead of that, we'll set the left position as well. So instead of this, 
we'll do uh, style that left will be minus 4m and here will be zero i think so we drag okay not 4m we need it was 40 let me see here fast <coughs> sorry left 40 how much is that 10 rem yeah 10 rem so minus 10 rem so that way we work with the left property only yeah when we're dragging down uh, dragging dragging it back it's weird it's it's really hard to do drag events i i have to admit that well you're all also working with the mouse so i'm not sure why this doesn't this looks weird because we're sliding to the right <laughs> yeah that looks good, but then if we go the other way around, looks bad. Hmm. But why is that? So initial click will be here. If we move to that side, left will be my, we need to add it to it. Yeah, that's a fun part. So when we go back there, it's not the left is not calculated properly. It messes up. This is no bueno. Okay, I have another idea. Uh, I'll comment this out for now. We have work this part working. Uh, yeah, it's not animated. So let's go back to having class list add minus translate x forty. And then remove so let's go back to this for now because we have a nice animation and i think if i do i'm thinking i'm thinking uh, there is a draggable can i have here restaurant element Draggable through. Uh, okay. <laughs> so that's kind of what I wanted to do to have it drag like this. But then our click event is not working anymore because when we click, we are still there in that position. So yeah, click is not working. <laughs> Damn it. So I guess drag enter. What what yeah, let's move to drag. Enter. Drag enter event. Okay. Drag enter. And I want to console that log. E that offset. Oh, we'll switch it up now. 
Okay. And I want drag leave. Drag leave. And do the same console.log. E that. Maybe we have some kind of a drag distance. Wow. Wow. Why it's so much? So we click here. We leave it. Yeah, see, it's no bueno. <laughs> no buenos. It's too big there for some reason. <laughs> draggy, draggy, draggy. I don't like you. You very hard. <laughs> so drag enter. If target contains drop zone, and drop zone. If contains, remove. Nah. Too easy. Drag. Oh, drag start. And we have drag over. Is fired when an element or text selection is being dragged over a valid drop target every few hundred milliseconds. Let's see the example we have here. Is there still the same example? So drag start, drag the event target. Event prevent default, drag over. Prevents default to allow drop. And then drop, prevent default action, open as link, okay. If target element drop zone. Okay, we remove the child and yeah, we don't want that. Hard. Maybe if you can restrict drag and drag to only left and right. Amazing shorts and facts. Hi, watch your channel for one year. Thank you. Ibrahim, no, you're not late. You're just in time. We're figuring out drag events. Okay. This is Art. So the drag event, let's see. So here's just consoling. Um, drag target. Again. Adds events. So we don't have a good example. I mean, I could also hmm, add the event on the draggable thingy. <laughs> I see they're also using e target. It's also interesting. You can add. A we can add it to the wrapper and then we figure out which one we clicked on. Yeah. Fuck part. Let's let's look it up. Let's let's ask GPT. How's that? Let's see. Is it smart enough? Uh, I'm looking to drag an event, drag an uh, an element in JavaScript, and I want to see how much I drag it for in pixels. What can I use? What events do I need to use? Let's see. Is ChatGPT smart enough? Mouse down event, mouse move event, mouse up event. Start X, start Y, and X and Y. Yeah, we did that already.
yeah, this is a nice one. We can use Matt Squirt, Matt Pow to have the distance we dragged it. Mm hmm. Yeah, see, they're using mouse mouse events. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, this work on a mobile device. The, uh, the code provided above is mouse events, which are designed for desktop, work for mobile, you should use touch events. Yeah, so touch start, touch move, touch end, same thing. Okay, okay, so yeah, pretty much, oh, touches. Oh, you could have multiple touches on mobile. That's, that's cool. All right. It can do that. Well, we had that for mobile, uh, for mouse move. Okay. All right, so we had this. All right, going back to the mouse events. How can I make it so that I can see the element move when I drag it? AKA, if I drag it 100 pixels, it moves in that direction with 100 pixels or by 100 pixels. This involves changing left and top properties, assuming its position is in absolute relative. Okay, adding CSS. Uh, okay, on mouse move. Calculate the new position. Calculate the distance moved. Left and top. Okay. So again, we kind of had this, right? Left. When the mouse is pressed down over the element, we record the initial position. At the mouse move, we calculate the distance between the current position and the last recorded position. We then adjust the element's left and top properties by this distance. So maybe there's where I was wrong. So offset top. Well, offset, oh, offset left plus delta. And the delta is the new x minus. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's where I messed up. Uh, yeah, I saw the prompt for Vercel. Because I was basically not adding the, del the delta to it. Although I only want to add it to the... That's another tricky part. How do I make it so that it doesn't go to the right? I guess I could limit it to see... Alright, is it a negative number? This delta? Does it go to the left? If not, don't do anything. Otherwise... Go to the right. Or I guess... Hmm. Remove the... Okay, it also removes the event listeners. Uh, prevent any default action to avoid issues. Ooh, issues. Record starting move position. Client X, client Y. Okay, so it uses the client. That's good. That's good. We're using the offset. So that wasn't good. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. We're learning, we're learning. At some point, we're going to figure this out. Sadly, I won't be able to start working on other project, I think. I think we can still uh, try to write the to-dos, what we're going to do tomorrow. Or maybe, 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 maybe. I'll do a stream later today because I'm excited about that project. But since we are still here, let's 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 do this. I'm motivated to build this stupid drag event.
Ok, now with the power of GPT inside our veins and half a liter of water inside our brains, let's go back and see what we can do. Uh, boom. All right, so we're going back to mouse events. I don't care. We do that now. So mouse down. If mouse is down, we let's let's also redefine our variables to be uh, what was here. I'm going to use GPT to help me. So we want to have start X. So that's kind of initial initial X. This is undefined. All right. Now, uh, another thing I want to do is let's. Now, this is a tricky one. Can I add the event? I want to add the event listeners only on this draggable thingy. So, uh, let's see. Draggable thingy. We're going to do restaurant elements, query selector, and we'll have the draggable. And then on the draggable thingy, let's call it draggable element. Be cool, be cool. We're going to add, add event listener. We'll have a mouse down and we'll have a function here. Then we're going to have a mouse up and we're going to have a mouse move. All right, and we'll keep it very simple here, clean, and let's see, uh, on mouse down, I'll have the function on mouse down, on mouse up, and on mouse move. Like that, okay? Good. Let's see if this works because now we can write the functions here on mouse down and we, we keep the clone the code we keep it simpler and nicer and well prettier like that okay mouse move good and we'll get the events for each of these and yeah, so again, it does prevent default on mouse down. That's interesting. And also on mouse move, no, on mouse up, it just, oh, this is also interesting. Here it removes the event listeners for some reason. I don't know why, uh, but I'll leave it. And I'll just reset the X position here. So on mouse up, I want the, how was the, pro, the value here? Initial X. Initial X to be, let's put it undefined again. So that's kind of our reset, reset thingy. Good. Now on mouse move, I'm going to get inspired by this code. Okay, uh, we don't want Y, we don't want Y, we don't want Y, and not Y again. Update start, okay, get it. So, inspired by ChatGPT's code, uh, sure, we don't want comments because people will figure out we use ChatGPT's code, so shh. Okay, so uh, the new X will be either client X here as well. We want to say, uh, and we have initial X. So initial X will be E dot client client X. <laughs> right? Yeah. So we just do that and then, oh, on mouse down, he adds the event. Okay, nice. On mouse down, it adds the event and then on mouse up, it removes the event. Okay, that's pretty, pretty interesting. 
draggable event is not defined. Oh, shut up. What's wrong with you? Uh, mouse up, mouse down, mouse move. Draggable, uh, whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, I know, I know. This inspired code, we don't have it. <laughs> so... Here we want... Now this is tricky. I guess we have to pass it to this function. Or we could say either target. Hmm. Uh, although I'm not 100% sure. Start tax in the fun. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. See? We can kind of move it now. But I only want to move it if we have initial x. So if initial x. This means that we are clicking down. We want to do this. So we're clicking and we're... Initial x is not defined. So... Mouse move. Oh, initial. Okay, okay. So we're clicking, we're dragging. Wow. That's smooth as butter. Look at that. Wow. Jeez, that's fine. Okay, chat GPT, you get a point. Like that. Looks really good. <laughs> I, I have nothing to say like it's very uh this was the part that i didn't do i mean these two parts because i was setting the left always to be so i was only considering going to the left side but we also go to the right side you know so yeah pretty smooth 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 like butter okay good now there are still things to do we're not done we're not done yet. So, uh, what do you want to do? Well, I want to... This is going to be a tricky one. When I slide it... Well, first of all, I don't want this to be like this. I don't want it to be like this. Right? And what I want to do is when we drag it, and we drag it like 50 pixels and leave it, I want it to slide here, like that, okay? Let's see, look, this is also no bueno. <laughs> I can kind of move everything <laughs> if I click on it. So yeah, initial click is not defined. Oh, I have, wait, 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 I also have these things. Now. Uh, well, actually, let me just comment it out because I might use something from there. Okay, good. So, those. Yeah, that I don't like that. So, if we move through these and kind of figure out that. Hmm. Although, the nice part about it is that it kind of it doesn't jump. The element is not jumping. So... All right, I guess we'll we'll leave this as a bug slash feature. <laughs> uh, okay, but I want to do that bounce thing somehow, <clears throat> and I guess the way I can do it is. Uh, can't do this part here. So the new X is client X and delta X is that. And I can say if delta X is greater than amount, drag amount, right? Then, oh, uh, let me try to see. We, we can select 
the target left and put it at zero pixels. And I can add also the EDA target uh, class list, class list. I can add that minus translate y uh, 40. Else, so I think, I, I hope, you know, I hope that this will work. So if drag about, uh, okay, so we're setting left to zero and then we're kind of removing classes and it should animate because we have transition, right? Right? Okay, let's see. So I move it, works, I leave it, okay. I move it, I leave it, okay. I move it, I leave it, okay. So something, something, it goes back, I like that. So we can't, all right. Why did that work? So this first part doesn't work, let's see. Console.log delta x, how, how much are you, buddy? Uh, although I want to see new x, delta x and also initial x let's see everything so I drag you or leave it new x delta x initial x new x delta x initial they're all the same why okay so they're always the same new x delta x Yeah, sorry, the new X and the initial X, they're the same. If I put this here, they shouldn't be the same, right? New X is not defined. Okay, 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 okay. So that's something wrong there. So if I drag it, oh wow. It's just going by minus one. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see again. So mouse down, I set the initial X to be client X. Client X is what? I think that kind of client X thing is bugging me here. Although we're moving it. Hmm. Oh, I know. I know. I know. We are resetting initial X here. Okay, good. I have an idea. Uh, we store another one. Let's start X. Undefined. Uh, current X. All right. This is going to be fun. So. When I click down, the start X will be client X and current X will also be client X. And then here, the new X is client X and delta X is new X minus start X. And then here is minus uh, current X. And we're resetting the current X. And we're testing current X or well, whichever. Because at the end, we want current X to be undefined and start X to be undefined. So we're basically using two X's. Okay, so drag, not working. Initial X is not defined. Where I still have it. Where are you initial? Okay, this one. So drag, boom, drag. So the drag is still working. Whoa, geez, what happened there? <laughs> I see that worked. This is X, not Y. People yelling at me, probably. So something definitely worked there. 
Okay. <laughs> oh boy. All right. I I know why. <laughs> we're using E that target. And yeah, we're kind of doing everything we're clicking on. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, so we can't do that. We want to store the drag draggable element on the find. And okay, yeah. So we'll store that and here instead of eda target, we'll do a draggable element. Hopefully that will work. No. And here also draggable element. Oh boy. Energy properties of undefined reading style. Current text, current text, okay, draggable element. I am missing something. Yeah. Oh boy. So we're. S mm, no bueno. We have the draggable element here, but it will always be the last because there are three. So we can't store it in the global variable. We'll have to figure out on mouse down. Which one is it and store that. So draggable, maybe global draggable will be E the target. And I feel like I'm complicating the code a lot now. Might not be the best way to do it. Mm, Eda target now. As that way we can click on the images as well. And the stars and all that. Alright, so we need to pass in this. Okay. So let me do that. We have E and we pass in E and also the target which is draggable element. Right. And then we store this. E prevent default there. We get X and Y. Okay. Will this work? Okay, good. Good. Okay. At least we're not like doing weird things anymore. Well, it's still not perfect. But it's starting to be better. Like right now, the issue is that if we move to the right more than uh, our drag amount, it will still open it. So we need to figure out if we move to the right or to the left. So if. So let's see. We need to see if we're moving to the left. And we're moving more than the drag amount. So if delta x is less than zero and the drag amount is that way.
not less than zero. New start. Start X. Okay, so bigger than zero. <laughs> but let me see what's delta here. Minus 73, minus 83, minus 26, the move it that way is 97. Okay, so it should work with mine, less than zero. If it's less than zero. Uh, oh, and yeah, it's weird. Delta X is bigger than drag amount. <laughs> uh, so I guess minus drag amount because it goes to the left, so it will be a negative number, but the drag amount is positive. So we want to make sure it's that now. Come on. So this way it's less than zero and or I guess I could say just less than drag amount. Oh wow, that was simpler than I was complicated things. And we'll still have that whoop, 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 see? Because we're moving the left to zero and then removing and translation transitioning and stuff. I guess I could say left minus 10 RAM, and left is zero. But then we won't have the animation, unfortunately. But at least we have the drag event now. Finally. <laughs> we just have to figure out how to animate left. Uh, I think I can overrun override transition to be transition all 0 0.3 seconds linear or well is in wow look at that but we won't have it's weird <laughs> it takes it takes 0 0.3 seconds to move. <laughs> Damn it. It's so hard. Okay, transition special. Oh, I'll figure it out. I won't give up. So... Hmm. Thank you for the follow. Uh, I only want to move, have the transition class here. Uh, because, like, here we're moving the left. Okay, we're resetting the left. If I add transition to all, then it will take 0 0.3 seconds to, well, move one pixel on the screen. See? Uh, well, we're not applying now, but if I do this, see, I move it like this and look how much it takes. No, it's not even working. That's weird. Huh. I don't have a draggable on it. I could. Hmm. But now, then. We have that code for nothing. So this works. Just bumping there. Hmm. I. There's another way we could calculate the translate and have it animate, but that's tough. No, I don't want to do that. That feels like a hacky move as well. Hmm. 
Chat, what do we do? While dragging, allow the slide to follow the cursor. Then on release, calculate the distance left to travel and animate that. <sighs> I say Alt F4. <laughs> yeah, Marcus has a good point. Um, but how do we animate? Like here, I create an animation. Oh boy, I spent two hours on this. <laughs> Stupid thing, man. <laughs> it's tough. And this is not even working on mobile. So yeah. Fun stuff. Hello, dear. Hey, Jay Wood, how are you? I'm good, a, a bit burnt. <laughs> I also have to leave in 30 minutes. Oh boy. I have a hacky idea in mind. You won't like it. It's not perfect, but it's something. We could. Maybe it won't work. Let's see. So we could do global draggable uh, class list add transition special. Is it transition special or translate? Yeah. And then set timeout. And then we remove it after 500 milliseconds. <laughs> this is hacky. Very hacky. Don't try this at home. I'm just trying to see is that like something I could remove. So we're dragging. All works fine. We don't have that special class. When I leave it, it goes there. And after 500 milliseconds, it's back on track. Am I a genius? Probably not. But this works. And I could use 300 milliseconds like there. Let's see, if I use 200 milliseconds, it will... Yeah, it will jump. <laughs> but uh, it works. It's a hack. Let me say here. This is a hack. No do home. Uh, but it works. Surprisingly. All right. We're not done yet. We still need to do touch event. Instead of set timeout, you can remove the class on mouse down. You're a genius. I like that. And then it doesn't feel like a hack anymore. So we move it there, here. And we'll say here, Marcus is a genius. And then we don't need a set timeout. Let's see. Uh, it doesn't see. Sorry, Marcus. What's wrong, though? <laughs> yeah, I called you. What's happening? So why it's not working? Should work. Mouse down. We remove transition special. And mouse up. We add it. Worth to try. Yeah, sorry. Marcus, try again. <laughs> that should have worked. So, okay. We'll leave it like this for now. 
Oh, but wait, look. We still have that problem. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Okay, yeah. Now we can do that. Alright. But, okay. I should do the mobile version. But I'm not gonna do now, because I'll have to leave soon. If you're interested, let a comment down below. If you're interested, leave a comment down below, and I'll try to do that as well. But for now, it works on mouse, so I'm happy with that. Alright. Uh, Yeah. This was a fun one, as I kind of called it. <laughs> I honestly didn't think it will take over an hour to do. <laughs> I mean, just this drag thing. No mobile. We work on a new and an another project tomorrow. Yeah. I have to go to the airport to become someone in 30 minutes, so that's why... Uh, I can do the project, although I really, really want to start working on another project as well. Uh, Power by says, Hi Florine, please start the series on learning JavaScript course from beginning. Your way of explaining is fantastic. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad you like that. I'm doing my best. Also, Amir, thank you for the follow. And Echo, thank you for the follow. And thank you for the donations and the subscriptions and the memberships. Thank you. I'm really happy that you like the content and we'll do more because I enjoy it and because you also enjoy it, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mihai, what you doing? Okay, so let's do a short recap. Uh, and this will become the video intro. So let me think how we're going for we're going to phrase it. All right, just hanging in there. I want to record the video intro for this and then we'll be we'll be done with the project and we move on to plan tomorrow's project, which is going to be harder than this. <laughs> but we progress. We learn every day something new and we build stuff. I just see that this says more fissy. <laughs> Alright, good. Uh, two hours and 48 minutes. Just so me, just so I can remember where I have the intro. Okay. Let me think what, what I'm going to say. Move this down so people can see my beautiful mouth. Weird though. Uh, this is the hardest part when doing a video intro. You don't know how to like phrase it to make it very catchy. You know? Okay. Let me show you how to build a restaurant UI mobile. No, okay. Rephrase it. Let me show you how to build a restaurant UI and how to add drag events so you can make it look like this. This is the beautiful layout that we have, and all of this is built dynamically in JavaScript. So whenever we want to add a new restaurant place, we just add a new object and boom, it magically appears in the DOM. Also, we spent, as you'll see, probably an hour to build this drag event. So you can drag the place, and if you drag it for more than 50 pixels, you also see the call and bookmark options. I hope you'll like this. No. Uh, 
So yeah, let me show you. No, no, something else. Uh. So next, you're going to see me struggle to build this during a live stream. Nah, it's not good. So next, you're going to see me build this during a live stream. Enjoy. Okay, good. That was, I guess, good. I'm going to try to cut it out and make some something good of it. All right. Good job. Good job, chat. Now, let me drink some more water because I need more brain power to plan out the project for tomorrow. Yeah, that was funny. Imagine I do that like 50 times when I make a video. It, it takes so much time to like figure out what to say. It, it's, it's weird to like, you know, and the funny part is that I have no issues talking during the stream, you know, right, right now, I'm just, I don't have to think what I want to say. But whenever I know that, wait, there's a video, I have to, uh, uh, what I have to say. <laughs> and then it kind of like freezes me up. Goody, goody. So I like this project, by the way, let me submit it. Wow, I lost my streak. Damn it. Oh, well. Chat, if you want to see the project, play around with the code. Uh, you can go to icodes.com, submissions. This is 67423. I, I don't know why uh, Twitch chat doesn't allow me to paste it. Reason? Oh, finally, I see the mode icon. So now I can just bump things. By the way, mod uh, Adrian. Okay, Adrian, you should have mod in Twitch chat as well. <clears throat> Good. Goody, 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 goody. Let me... There's a border that something's wrong there. Or no? I think that huh. the height is not the same. Okay, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> All right, good. So let's go to work and work. And here we're going to do a new folder chat. Let me know. How should we call this game? Again, this is a game with circles moving on the screen and we are the circles. And you could point towards the direction and you shoot something which will hit someone if you shoot it well. <laughs> uh, but uh, you, you know what? Let's start with the... Let's start the right way. I mean, the way I always type things. Can I do Excalibur in a Excalibur? Ah! Okay, I'm better now. Thanks for asking. Good. So this is the this is what we want to build. This is the browser window, and we're going to have people. This is. Come on. People one, and we're going to have people one, one, one. So people one, two, three, whatever. And this is people 69. So we'll have different people from different sides. All right. By the way, let me make it big for you now. So these are the players. And what we're going to do is we're going to have bullets. 
Can I make this throw? Yeah, background white. So these are bullets. So person one will shoot bullets towards someone and person two, the bullet will be here and another bullet will be here because person three can't aim, right? So these are bullets. Yeah, and that's kind of it. <laughs> Shooting circles. Yeah, that's very creative. <laughs> Something like slider.io. Yeah, probably like that. Uh, yeah. And this is the, the bullet goes and this trajection. Can I do? Yeah. So like that. I guess. And then this bullet goes this way. Like that. And then this bullet goes this way, like this. As I said, player three doesn't know how to aim. And if you're hit by the bullet, well, you die. And then we have, of course, my my beautiful layout thingy here, which has can I type or can I type? Okay. Oh, leaderboard. And this will be uh, dark purple and uh, large, whatever. Okay, good. And one is Florin. And we'll have something like maybe. Hello, Captain Purple, you're streaming again. Yes, I am. How are you, Oxy? So oh, Florin will be uh, something like, I don't know, 4 over 1. And then Mihai will be 0 over 4 because he's a noob. And Adrian will be uh, 3 over 2. And that over... So can I make this smaller? Medium? Nah, I can't. Or never mind. Or I guess I could... You know what? Aha! Come on, leaderboard, and you will be big and like that, and you'll stay there. Okay, Just listen to me. Yeah, and you'll also be like this. All right, good. Cool. See, so basically, this will mean how many people you killed and how many times you died. Fun stuff, right? Now. All good. Uh, and also we'll have a history here somewhere. Uh, Adrian. X. Mihai. Again. <laughs> okay. So you also have something like this. Or maybe something like... Because... Got shot in the face. Uh, what is this? A homemade editor? No, this is Excali Draw. You can draw stuff on it. So I use it to, well, draw stuff. <laughs> okay. So that's that. And that's, and also like, Rain killed me high. Everyone kills me high. Yeah. All right. So this is the history or something, you know? Good. I like this. Uh, whoops, you'll go here. All right, now the cool part is the to do's, what we have to do. So, to do's. This is what we're going to do for the next 15 minutes before I go to figure out, all right, what are all the things we need to do in order to, well, make this into reality. So let's see. I'm going to brainstorm things. So, uh, 
we need to allow user to select username we need to uh, place user in a canvas then allow user to move around then uh, broadcast the movement to all users so whenever I go to the left they should see me go to the left then allow user to shoot direction of mouse then if bullet hits user user responds after i don't know 10 seconds or something uh, also if user hits bullet uh, update leaderboard leaderboard also uh show history who killed who leaderboard all right and another thing it's like create world where uh, something like create big world where a circle can move around also it's like bigger than the viewport so basically the world will be very very big and you move but you're not actually moving but the viewport moves the circle stays in center but world moves around right so you, if you go to the left basically the world goes to the right and that way you're always in the middle yeah that's going to be hard so there are several things i don't know how to do yet but uh, we'll figure it out of course this will be a big pro bigger project but if we make make this that's gonna be super fun i'm like we'll we'll have a lot of fun playing this uh yeah so i think that's it am i missing something this will have like event from client to server oh place user in canvas this will be event uh, broadcast to all users from server and allow users to move around circle stays center okay this will also broadcast to all from server yeah so basically this part allow user to shot okay this will also be broadcast to all so basically let's see whenever a user joins we also have to figure out place it in canvas make sure nothing is there right because if you select the region and there's a bullet the user instantly dies <laughs> nope uh but yeah it's not its fault all right allow user to move around broadcast to all server good allow user to shot so yeah he here we need to figure out like the direction there yeah that's a, a bit of a thing to do uh, if bullet hits the user user responds okay and here we'll have to like show timer or respawn up the leaderboard shot history uh else what what else like we want to remove bullet if out of world right 
Because bullet goes, and then doesn't go anymore. Okay, so I think that's it. Chat. Any any other things where we missed? Oh, you can't see because of my big face. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just just say something. Okay, sorry about it. Uh, good. I think that's it. And of course, we'll use Socket.io and... Ooh, Canvas. I don't know. <laughs> I could use Devs in a fixed... <laughs> nah. I need to use, to learn how to use Canvas. <laughs> Thank you, dumb and awesome. Or follow. Okay, okay. I think we're good with this one. It will be work. I, I don't know if we can finish tomorrow. Also, tomorrow I want to build another act of this project, but maybe that does. <laughs> maybe I don't spend three hours on it. Hopefully. Uh. Yeah. <clears throat> I was thinking if I'm going to stream today. Because I... <laughs> I like this idea. I want to start working on it. But yeah. Alright. I'm going to get ready to go to the airport. And then I'm going to... I need to edit some videos. Because I want to keep pumping content on the channel. I want people to find out that we're building fun stuff. To join the stream. And learn. Right? That's the goal. So for that, I also I need to stream, but also upload videos. It's going to be a bit tricky until I find someone to do that for me. Uh, but yeah, will be good. All right, chat. Thank you for joining today. Um. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, make sure you join our Discord. Type a Discord in the chat and I, you'll find a link, I think. Uh, let me see. We should have that. Discord. Yeah. Can I copy this? Ah, okay, I can copy. Okay. So that's the Discord link. Uh, you can join the Discord. That's the I call this Discord, but we'll expand it to work on all the things we're doing and i'll see you tomorrow morning this week i'm going to continue to stream in the morning and i think next week i'm going to move to evening stream well afternoon so right now it's at between three th uh sorry right now i stream from between 9.30 to 10. Uh, and now it's 1 p.m. So I, the stream starts at 9.30 a.m., maybe a bit later, up to 10 a.m. But from next week, I want to... This is GMT plus two, by the way. If for those of you who are other time zones, which is probably most of you. Um, but I want to move... Also try to stream in the afternoon, which will be probably 4 p.m. So 4 p.m. GMT plus 2. Uh, yeah. I think, so from my research, what I found is that there are more people live uh, at 4 p.m. So yeah, probably because you also, you get all the time zones. Mo well, mostly all the time zones are up. At that time, so 4 p.m. here means something like uh, 10 a.m. in the U.S. and also like uh, 7 p.m. in Asia. You know, so it's kind of kind of like everyone is up and running. Yeah, so I'll try that time from next week. But this week we'll continue in the morning stream, 
for me personally, it's more productive to stream in the morning because I wake up. I, for, for example, today I went for a run and then I just stream. I, I had breakfast and I stream. And my brain is also like not filled with day stuff. It's just ready to go. Uh, I'm curious to see how it's going to be if I stream afternoon. I'll probably have to take a nap before the stream. It'll kind of reset my brain. But yeah. All right. Thank you all for joining. I hope you'll have a good day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.